New world currency issued, folks. Guard your cash. So there's been a lot of things happening out there, and we're going to talk about it. So first up, a Saudi Arabian passenger jet just got hit by gunfire while sitting on the tarmac in Sudan with passengers on board. Crazy, right? Also, the World Bank has just issued a digital currency, which is a pretty big deal since we've been waiting for the Federal Reserve to do it for themselves. But while we're still waiting for that, the IMF decided to go ahead and make their own move. Go ahead and check this out. In other words, they're here to assert control and pretty much make sure that no country or no no people get out of line. Scary stuff, folks, huh? So what do you guys think? Are you ready to surrender your finances to the global central bank digital currency? Drop your thoughts in the comments down below. Now, in other news, it turns out that El Nino is confirmed to be developing on the West Coast of the United States. And we're going to discuss exactly how it's going to affect agriculture and oil production. Plus, more fighter jets have been approved to be sent to the Ukraine by Poland. And I'm going to update you guys on the current status of that one. Oh, and guess what? The Wagner Group, or as they like to call them, the Black Water of Russia, they've called on Putin to enter into peace talks and declare victory to stop the invasion. Now, what's this got to do with us, right? Well, a lot. Basically, we've got a whole new world order in the works and the United States may not come out on the top anymore. And so that's why we need to prep, prep, prep. Also, for the best way to invest in gold or silver, be sure to hit the links in the description down below this video. So guys, El Nino is something to watch out for this year. We got some news from the National Weather Service, which as we all know, you know, kind of can't predict Jack, but apparently El Nino is going to be happening this year. It's basically a big old warm patch of water and they can at least measure water temperatures pretty well these days. So for the next six months, we're going to be looking at heavy rainfall and heat waves in certain areas around the world, especially in the United States. So basically this is going to mess with our crops, not to mention other things. And in the past, it's made things like winter wheat and corn take a hit. Plus it's also going to jack up the prices on things like oil, rice, corn, and wheat. And we all know what happens when oil goes up, right? Gold prices follow suit. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Gas prices follow suit, but you, you guys get my point. But with this El Nino thing, it is almost certain to happen, especially since big changes in water temperatures like this are pretty obvious. So yeah, we're going to be dealing with some crazy weather right here in the United States soon. So get ready, folks. Now on the topic of shortages, we were at Walmart recently in our area and the vinegar section was almost 100% full. They had both white vinegar and apple cider vinegar. So it's definitely still being made. Apparently, it's just a matter of being at the store at the right time. Now, if there's any items that you guys are looking for, it might be smart to start shopping at any stores that carry them and, you know, maybe on your way to work or on your way from work. Once you know where the items are in the store, it only takes you a couple minutes to run in and grab it and walk out. And since you're kind of like already out and about, you won't be wasting gas. So just a quick mention of things abroad and the war in the Ukraine, since it's definitely draining a lot of Americans' resources, not to mention a whole lot of U.S. taxpayer money. So let's go ahead and start with Saudi Arabia. So there was a Saudi Arabian Airbus A330 that was heading to Saudi Arabia from Karatan in, Sud from Karatown in Sudan, which by the way is up north. It's not South Sudan, but Northern Sudan, which has been going going through a lot of drama since 2021 when there was a coup that toppled the government. Now, it hasn't been peaceful there ever since, and there is a militia that controls parts of the city. There was gunfire, and someone started shooting at the passenger jet while there was crew and passengers on board. Luckily, the plane was not moving at the time, and everybody was able to get off safely. They took them to the Saudi Arabian embassy where they're waiting for developments. All flights in and out of the Caratown have been canceled because no one wants to fly in a war zone. Three civilians died at the airport in the area at the time, so yeah, so definitely some pretty serious stuff out there. So anyway, let's talk about what's going on in the Ukraine because it is a pretty big deal right now. So there's this group called Wagner, which is basically Russia's private military. They have been doing most of the fighting and have had the most success, but now they've broken with Putin and suggested that they put a stop to the military operation. They want Russia to announce that they've achieved what they wanted to achieve and just call it a day. Apparently, they've already achieved a lot by killing a bunch of Ukrainian soldiers and scaring others into running away. The special operation was supposed to be capturing some districts, but they haven't gotten gotten that done yet. About 75% of the town is now in Russian hands, but they're still moving slowly. And the Ukraine is counterattacking in some areas. Now, Wagner's point is basically why bother? They're not taking as much territory as they want, and it's just costing a lot of Russian lives. So hopefully there's going to be some peace talks or something, or Wagner's leader might just disappear one day. Who knows? So moving on to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, they just unveiled this new global currency called the Universal Monetary Unit, or the Unicoin, or I should say Unicoin, for short. 
Pretty crazy, right? So the idea is that central banks will be able to transfer money between each other and use these uni coins, but that's basically what we used to use the dollar for. And because we're using fewer dollars, it could mean inflation and make the value of everyone's money drop. But hey, IMF can issue all the uni coins at once. Kind of reminds me when the euro was first introduced. That was supposed to replace the dollar too, if you guys remember. Bottom line, few prosperous governments want to give up their sovereignty over the financial resources and assets. Now, we've been seeing more and more cryptocurrencies, especially ones that are backed by central banks. These are supposed to be decentralized ledgers that allow people to transfer value, but these new ones are actually centralized. So the bank knows exactly who is getting what and can decide whether or not to approve the transactions. And that's not very good news for anybody who wants freedom to buy whatever they want. I mean, just imagine going to the store and being declined because you've exceeded your carbon footprint for the month or your social credit score isn't high enough. It's kind of like what's happening in China right now. They're taking even more control over people's finances by issuing a centralized digital yuan. Scary stuff over there, man. All right. So basically retail CBDCs are like digital cash that you can use to make all sorts of electronic payments. And it's backed by the central bank instead of a regular commercial bank. So the Fed just put out a report and they're saying that even though we've been using digital money for a while now, like when you have money in your bank account, the CBDC is different because it's directly tied to the Federal Reserve. And so that means government control over your cash flow and your finances. I mean, just take what happened in China, for example. Back in 2022, some people shared pictures of a banner criticizing a high up Chinese Communist Party leader on the app called WeChat. So keep in mind, this WeChat app on your phone, it could be used to be making payments. But then their accounts got suspended so they couldn't do everyday things like ordering a ride, buying food, paying for gas, that sort of thing. And this kind of thing is happening closer to home as well. In Canada, the government ordered banks to freeze the accounts of people involved in protests that they didn't approve of. Now, whether you think that these actions are fair or not, they should make anybody nervous about being on the wrong side of the government. And these situations happened with the old school financial systems that we have in place right now. They're much less efficient than a CBDC. You see, guys, it's all about control. Central bank digital currencies, CBDCs, they're coming and they're coming sooner than you might think. Now, just recently, the Bank for International Settlements, the BIS, the joined forces with the Hong Kong Monetary Authority, the Bank of Thailand, the People's Bank of China, and the Central Bank of the United Arab Emirates to pilot commercial cross-border foreign exchange transactions based on CBDCs. So central banks say that CBDCs will be used alongside cash and regular bank money, but I can totally see governments forcing CBDCs on people by basically making cash and deposits obsolete. Now we can already see a push towards a cashless society happening in Nigeria. That's where they launched their own CBDC back in 2021. The Nigerian government just just announced that people will only be able to withdraw a limited amount of cash from ATMs each week, and they're getting rid of their old notes soon. Now, if a government uses CBDCs to control or to surveil its people, that could be a major problem. We got to be careful about the consequences of adopting CBDCs. CBDCs have a lot of features that would CBDCs have a lot of features that would interest authoritarian regimes. They give the government direct control over the digital currency of the nation, which means that they can impose negative interest rates or collect taxes right from the people's accounts. But this is not all, guys. CBDCs also make it possible for the financial system to be used for spying and for censorship. Governments can set up direct retail accounts with the central banks and freeze the funds of anybody who doesn't behave as desired. And this isn't just something that happens in countries that are often associated with authoritarianism. In Canada, for example, emergency powers were used to freeze the financial assets of truckers that were protesting against the C-19 vaccine mandates. CBDCs can take us back to the Soviet era of state control. It's a fully centralized system that can be used to suppress human rights. And we need to be wary of the potential consequences of CBDC adoption, especially if they fall into the wrong hands. Looking at all of this from an objective point of view, I still believe that we have all of the power to change things for the better. Now, unfortunately, people tend to get too comfortable to get involved. Extremes on both ends of the political spectrum are being shown all the time to rile people up against each other instead of, you know, against the system that's manipulating all of us. So yeah, we need to get the word out. That way we can wake up more people from this government brainwashing. Now, aside from that, you know, you can always stack up food and supplies for, you know, lean times as they're coming. Position yourselves accordingly. And of course, for the best way to invest in gold or silver, hit the links in the description down below this video. Now for now, hope you guys caught all the major headlines in today's financial update and daily news report. War and violence is happening abroad and pulling America in. IMF trying to push their global currency agenda. And for our finale, the dangers of total CBDC control and what you can do to prepare against it. Yeah, guys, definitely something to watch out for. But as always, appreciate you guys watching. Please be kind to one another and I will see you on the next video.